Hey, good morning, Catalina Foothills Church. Uh, Pastor John Stone here with our Tuesday morning devotion. And this week we're going to be in Matthew again. And uh, in Matthew 5, verse 17, it says, and these are pretty famous words, Do not think, this is Jesus obviously, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not to, to come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. It'll be a fun Sunday. A lot of good words here. A couple of things that are worth highlighting, and they're things we emphasize a lot at our church, and really, certainly we're not the only or exclusively the people who would emphasize this, but Jesus is very clear that he has come to fulfill the law. As he does his, um, as, as he really preaches this sermon and talks about the Beatitudes, and really with what's going to follow with him talking about murder, that hatred is as bad as murder, or lust is as bad as adultery, that divorce is not allowed, that even taking an oath by anything other than an oath to God is sinful. He's going to really rattle the whole group. And, and, and here he's also sort of trying to rattle the group in a couple ways by saying, I have come to fulfill the law. And in, in the minds of the Jewish listeners, in the minds of both just regular people, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the teachers of the law, they could not imagine the law being fulfilled. They wanted to build a temple. They wanted the sacrifices to go on forever. And even now, understandably, Jewish scholars, those who take the Old Testament seriously to be true, to be the Word of God, would like to see a temple reinstituted and the sacrifices reinstituted because that's the only way to be forgiven. It is laid out in the Old Testament that if you want to be forgiven, you have to offer the sacrifice for sin. And... and and to fulfill those things, you have, to, you have to offer those sacrifices. But Jesus is saying something far more important here, right? He's saying, I haven't come to teach you to fulfill the law. I haven't come to help you understand the law more clearly. I have come to fulfill the law. And we see this Christ-centered focus that is not only present in the Gospels and the New Testament, but now echoes back even to Genesis 3 where God takes an animal and he sacrifices it and it substitutes its death for the death that Adam and Eve should have had so that they might live and they might be covered. We see this Christ-centered focus go down through Scripture and Christ is saying, look, and this is what's going to bother them throughout the whole Old Testament. If you want to understand God our Father, if you want to know God's will, if you want to follow God, know me. I've come to fulfill the law. I've come to make sure that the law has been accomplished for God, our Father. And in case they don't catch that, and they probably didn't, quite honestly, with this sentence, as he goes on through his ministry, they'll understand it. He says something that would have really caught them off guard. He says, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I mean, this statement is powerful because for everyone in that culture, both pagans and the Jewish people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law, their righteousness was undisputed. Again, they prayed, I'm glad that I'm not like this tax collector. They prayed and boasted about their giving, their generosity. And it was sort of without dispute that they were righteous and they were the model they were the standard they were the teachers they were the leaders of the church and now jesus says you have to be better than them if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven and this would have devastated people and to become a christian to understand what it means to have faith in jesus christ to understand why we need christ to fulfill that law it's important that we understand that our righteousness must surpass that of the most righteous people ever. And the point is, we can't surpass that righteousness. That, that high bar is not high enough. And if we set it higher, it would need to be even higher 
than that, that this righteousness that is required of God, we cannot attain on our own. We cannot fulfill the law. He does. We cannot attain the righteousness that he requires. He gives it to us. And we see Christ himself, and this is obvious, you don't need a devotion, preaching the good news about himself. I'm the fulfiller of the law, you're not. In me, you fulfill the law. In me, my righteous acts, my feeding the 5,000, my raising the dead, I give them to you. And in that forgiveness and that imputing of righteousness, that giving of righteousness, we find our freedom to be the children of God. And I look forward to this message on Sunday. I look forward to being with you on Sunday. I hope you have a good week. And may the Lord be with you.